Hello everyone, Adrian here with another Steel Division Normandy 44 replay. Straight from the live games lobby, so I have no idea how the quality is. So on the left side, as the Axis team, we have G Jacob, and spelled weirdly, as the Panzerlayer. We have Synax as the Luftwaffe, and Vinzinzen, Vinzinzen, I really have no idea. As the, I think what that I just can't think of the name of that uh division. Oh, not letting me. Oh, three hundred fifty second. There we go. Not sure why it wasn't popping up. I'm just trying to trying to think of the number for it. It's on the over on the Allies side as the first SSB, the commando unit. We have Ronan, obvious as the spearhead third armor and taiga three taiga three taiga three as the 101st airborne and here we go just <laughs> not planned but i'll take it just as i got done introing we do get the initial engagement starting out what's it going like oh i'm going here i'm going here i'm going here i'm going here 101st is probably best for on top but we do see the the commando regiment another good option for the city I was saying Air 101st because they have that, uh, what's it called? The Airborne Engineers, the Salt Engineers with 11 men. Looks like obvious the Spearheads go in the center. So pretty good area. We do got a heavy AT gun coming out from the Luftwaffe. As well as some other units. Looks like the initial engagement is going to be coming across the board. The commando player is moving forward. See some commando supports. Uh, Foos Marines, commando assaults. So, looking for a mixed bag of special. Ooh, this is not good. The Panzer Warfare, I'm assuming, yeah. The Panzer Warfare did, did, in fact, get a massive barrage in, forcing mass pin down. And some of these units are starting to be burned alive. He's not trying to force them back. This unit has out, but these units are being burned constantly, so they will, won't be able to recover from suppression. We do got a Scott and Sherman tank pushing up the center here. We do got some various Luftwaffe basic stuff. We do got a Flak 88. Huh. Oh, I was thinking it's a heavy AT gun. It's a Flak 88. Why did I think it was a Pac-43? But the Flak 36 88 millimeter is still an excellent AT weapon. We got airborne pack halter to help dis displace any advancing units. But while the main action is happening over here with the commandos versus the infantry. 352nd. 352nd. If I remember correctly, I always get that and the 116th mixed up with the. I think the 352nd kit does have access to the B2s, I believe. Maybe I'm not right. I always get those two mixed up. Man assaults are going to be a nice close range. They will rip apart these grenadiers. But we do got a Hellcat with some ro rocket run coming in. We'll pin down the pack as well as the reconnaissance unit. Overall, I would say the commando unit regiment is more slot out the win. Due to the fact that these commando assaults are very strong. They're similar to like the Canadian stormtroopers, but they have, of course, two demolition charges instead of one, but no smoke. So the MG42 team will be suppressed. We've got the Commando Foos Marines having two Brens, six uh, bolt action rifles, making a very good long range. Looks like these Panzer Grenadiers didn't manage to go forward. Fired off a Panzer Faust, not Panzer Grenadiers, uh, Luftwaffe Fusiliers. Will destroy the engine of one of these squads. And the Flak 88 has been spotted. Destroys in half track, but it's an open ground. It's very vulnerable to any indirect fire. The airborne unit player could send in a couple of pack howitzers to help really push those a these flak 88s out, since they do have, of course, the extended 2,000 meter range for battle phase A. Airborne engineers and starting to move forward. They do, of course, have the uh, flamer as well as three SMGs and Garands. Engine destroyed on the AA weapons, so no additional suppression, and of course, now it's bailed out. Do in fact have a Panzer III command tank now moving forward. It looks like this is not the B2 regiment. This is the other one. Other infantry. On the supports do of course have the Vickers. Okay, light machine guns, which has a higher rate of fire than the Bren. The 
is really not that good. Well, the Vickers K is actually more comparable to the MG42. Yes, I believe it is an individual MG42 and the Vickers K are in fact equal ish. Actually, may even have a slightly higher rate of fire, making it actually superior. Yeah, I got two uh, eight, uh, art fuel guns coming out. I believe these are the Zis 6 from the Russians, also known as the FK 2A8. It is, in fact, oh, Zis 3, not Zis 6. Either way. Reinforcing Panzer Grenadiers with the support of this Panzer III makes a very excellent unit. And he has to rely only on these tank busters, really, for AT and other infantry held weapons because he has no access to AT guns for Battle Phase A. Airborne, in, the Airborne player has managed to claim up the southern town. Currently, the field control is in favor of access at plus one at 51%. And we do got the BEO Storch, which is calling in an artillery strike here. So the Panzer III is receiving mortar fire, providing excellent suppression. And now we've got the Hellcat being called in, not for a rocket run, but in order to push that aircraft away. But the Flak 88 from his teammate, now two Flak 88s, will force back the aircraft. Time on target is about ready to finish. And this is a very juicy opportunity. Looks like it's rolling some misses right now. Large amount of misses. There's a wide, it was a fire on a fire for effect, or maybe emergency, not a uh, precision barrage. I'm sitting on something. Oh. Here goes the Willie's MG, I believe that was. We've got a number of flak half tracks moving forward. I need to suppress these units from far away. And just sort of wooden way. If you just push it, fall back to more in the city, those, those half tracks won't have much of an advantage. We do, in fact, have a Puma Reconnaissance AT coming on out. Let's go ahead and see what's going on in the center. It's mostly relatively a uh, standstill. The Flak 88s have been set up to them at least. Or it is, two of them have been set up, not at least, but. And ooh, this is way too close. But he does have, in fact, a line of sight blocker for now, which will result in a uh, good firing point. He needs to start getting deploying a lot of indirect fire in order to deal with these Flak 88s. His infantry and half, various half tracks will easily push away these disheartened infantry units. So he really needs to start getting a lot of indirect fire. But it looks like that one has spotted the mortar half track. Forcing it back, it may in fact go down for this next shot, but no, he does manage to fall back away from the arc. More half tracks are pushing, trying to push the airborne units out, but there's still plenty of men. We do got even now two airborne pack howitzers. Over on the north side, the Panzer III is still alive. We do got three squads of tank busters. Busters. I'm so used to saying Bustas from the Orcs from Dawn of War. These commando assaults have seen better days. They've probably accomplished quite a bit of work. They both used up both of their TNT demolition charges. So most likely they did do quite a bit of damage. And these Foos Marines are starting to run a bit low of ammo. Actually, bolt action rifles. Pretty not LMG. <coughs> well, very good gameplay from the infantry player dealing with the Kamado Marines, heavy, heavily vetted up units using these field guns, mortar teams. Though there's only there is a commando mortar team, but there's only one of them. It's going to get outgunned, outnumbered. Airborne engineers running up for a flanking maneuver. However, this half track will go ahead and spot them and we'll start providing suppressive fire. 
and the airborne engineers does in fact get pinned down. This what's left of the squad still has two sets of hands in order to fire the LMGs. So pushing up with these engineers while a good try was not exactly very good. Remember Staghound AAs are coming on out. They of course are very cheap, not exactly effective against AA, but they can be reasonable versus infantry squads. I see a Wildcat coming in for a bombing run. It does have access to bombs, smaller, but we'll go and take out that AT gun. I'm sort of surprised we haven't seen any sea fires. There were kinds of sea fires to strafe the area and as well as to spot nearby enemies. And that combination unit is actually very good. Well, with the Flak 88s, perhaps not. They don't have much staying power with those things out in the field. Looks like the airborne units still have not recovered from the suppression. And there's going to be a mass suppression fallback soon. There's a, there's a large number of LMGs in the area as well. So do got a lot of range firepower forcing them to stay, not to advance forward. Your control is still in favor of the Axis players at 52%. Now we're going to see some mortar smoke coming on in. Very nice. I like to see the mortar smoke. Tank busters are just out of range. That building in front of them is a strong. If you were to jump forward into, the, say, this building, he would be an excellent fire point. Oh, there's another squad of tank busters here. Both Piets have fired. Tracks are now broken. It's in the fallback state, making it, it useless. And there goes the Panzer III. Killing that off provides a huge amount of room to maneuver for the commando player. Looks like a Wildcat coming in for a bomber run onto the uh, Flak 88s. This one looks like going. Oh, wait. Darn. If you would have actually hit this one with it not being any sort of form cover, it would have taken full damage. We do got a Sherman Jumbo out. A Sherman Jumbo is exactly what he needs. The Sherman Jumbo has 20 frontal armor, while the armor penetration of the Flak 88 is only 15. But that Scott has received a direct hit and now has transmission damage. He's trying to hit that reconnaissance unit. Actually, a pretty good target to kill off. The Scouts could go ahead and fire. They do have two carbines. The command tank should just stay back. The Sherman Jumbo can shrug off those shots. So do got a Commando 6 here. This Commando 6 is a six-man sniper squad. However, gets pinned down to two mobile Flak Panzer Bren. Universal carriers with a, with a 20 millimeter Flak gun on top of it. And do see a Martyr 2 coming on out. Looks like we've got a bombing strike coming in, JU-188. This one has the 28 Carper Bomb variant. There is some A in the air to protect the stuff, but the bombs will in fact drop in. Will the Sherman Jumbo panic? Yes, it will panic. However, the Flak 88 is down to one member. He needs to put that far back. Oh, but all the AA with the two Bofors, three Bofors, these M-15s shot down the aircraft entirely. That's a massive loss. They didn't need to deploy any interceptor. So the Storch is coming on out for another designated artillery run. Commando 6 is trying to move forward, help support his ally in the center part of the map. But he's getting pinned down by these flak universal carriers. Looks like Pioneers have reinforced the front line. They do have two bundle grenades as well as a fully equipped squad and comparable to a Grenadier. Looks like he will manage to call in a time on target while in the fallback state. Most likely will wipe out this commando leader. We do got some Foos Marines. Foos Marines do of course have three SMGs so they're reasonable at close range. Everything's at long range with that at the moment. 
Commando player is being forced back. Battle phase B, where the, the commando player actually has less income than battle phase A, but deploying a huge wave of infantry. The martyr is actually a unique option. He knows he's facing against a commando player in which he has not deployed any DD uh, M4s, any DD Sherman tanks. So deploying is actually unusual. You won't really get much value with it. Looks like the Sherman Jungle will have his shooter knocked out. He needs a four focus fire. And looks like the Sherman Jumbo as well, the command tank, did not, in fact, uh, force in the fallback stake. But, oh, there goes the command tank doing some widespread uh, suppression there. We've got an M7 artillery piece now coming forward. I had to barrage down the... Oh, but it got spotted and destroyed, just leaving the Sherman Jumbo. The airborne unit has solidified itself in this general area. A radio operator would be excellent right now in order to displace all this, but do got some Panzer Warfare barrages. Two controls still in favor of the Axis players at 53% plus one income. But we do got some Commando Royal Marines now moving forward. They do have two Brens as well. Same thing as pretty much the Fus Marines. Really, I think they're pretty much exactly the same. Except for the fact that the, the Royal Marines have Piets for added AAT defense. Those are got just general beacons to mark down where those airborne pack howitzers are. The Vice it will be sending in some counter barrages now. Oh, there's a large number of pack howitzers. I love the pack howitzer. With 2,000 meter range, it's a very good uh, indirect fire support piece. And it comes as early as Battle Phase A. I just love it. This uh, city center will be occupied by the uh, Royal Marines. It will be very hard for the access player to push out in towards it, but vice versa, the open ground of the industrial complex here won't be easy to push in either. Looks like the Hellcat did not fire off all of its rockets, but will manage to snare, snag a mortar for its trouble. Panzer Brenz is moving forward. A uh, Sherman DD tank is now being called in. Sherman Jumbo is still, in fact, alive. I'm not really surprised about that. But it looks like we do got some more and more Luftwaffe teams are coming in, as well as our uh, heavy machine guns. More comparable to the, the 50 cal machine guns. I think it was a 30, 13 millimeter. It is in fact 13 millimeter, while a 50 cal is 12.7 millimeter. So in fact, it is larger than a 50, even though it has a disarching uh, crit. The spotting M8 will, did in fact go down quite quickly. We do got a couple pack howitzers now barraging that black AD at face, forcing it to be it to fall back. Oh, north side. The Marines are trying to push forward. Uh, <clears throat> in comparison to the Fus Marines, here's one to compare it to. They look exactly the same, except for the Piet. Number of men different? 11, 11. So yeah, they're pretty much the same, just for one has Piet's. Probably the battle phase as well. I think the Royal Marines are battle phase B only. We've got the Axis players trying to push forward with his units. The Pioneers do have bundle grenades to vet any rush forwards, but they can't throw them that this far from building to building, from warehouse to warehouse, factory to factory. And you've got a large firefight happening along the line. Over 20 squads are engaged in combat. On the south side, it looks like, oh, that's a lot of bombs and explosives. I do see one Panzer Warfare. There may have been some bombing strikes as well. The airborne player still has hold of the city, but large, numbers, large number of his units are wounded and pinned down. More Flak 88s are currently being deployed. The center ones, one of them has in fact, been cleaned up. Uh, Sherman Jumbo got hit by the side armor. I guess, oh, wait, nope, that was not the Sherman Jumbo. Never mind, that was a regular Sherman tank. The Sherman Jumbo is right here. Whoops. I saw that Sherman explode and that was Sherman Jumbo. A couple coming on down. We'll go ahead and suppress 
and pin down and deal some damage to those guys. There goes another Sherman tank. He just needs to... He knows he's facing against a lot of Flak 88s. He really just needs to deploy some... He should have Calliope's available, so he really should be deploying Calliope's. Looks like the Commando player did not go for Churchill's. He was going for just standard Sherman 5's. I like the Churchill's. They're actually pretty good. It looks like, the, oh, the sniper unit fired one shot in order to prevent the surrender of the Royal Marines. Very nice. Order 2 has used up all of its HE rounds. There is a Sherman tank going for the deal with, but Sherman tank's more likely to win out. The Martyr 2 does, of course, have the extended range, but it only has three armor, which is not good. You don't really see this one all too often. Mostly, you see a whole bunch of flak idiots for the Luftwaffe player. Looks like these uh, field guns are getting reinforced. Sherman Jumbo is still alive, but probably has seen quite a bit of weather. Maybe close to dying to HE damage now. Do got the Panzer Layer now fueling some heavier vehicles, such as the Panzer IV, which will be a bit problematic for the airborne player. But he still has a very good amount of indirect fire as well as AA. He just needs to on his anti. On the north side, the commando player and the infantry and the 352nd player are still locked in a pretty much a stalemate of infantry battles. But it looks like the 352nd player has gotten the upper hand. I see a large number of pioneers. We only see a handful. It just looks like there's a much better presence, much better unit composition. A lot of these units are very wounded. Looks like I may have dogfight, rocket run, bomb run coming in. I need to destroy, take out those support weapons. We do got bombing and rocket aircraft engaging these aircraft. The other bombing and rocket aircraft. Ooh, splash down one of them. Very nice. How many Flak 88s are left? I only see this one. So it looks like there's only one Flak 88 left. It looks like the second one being deployed out now. Your control is more in favor of the Axis players at 55%. So overall... I'm not really sure how the allied players can really get back in the game. Most of the Flak 88s are down in the center of the map, so more an armed van armored advancement, preferably since they're in Battle Phase C, help, deploying up, uh, potentially up to the rest of the Sherman Jumbos would be ideal, help push forward and withstand the AT gun fire as well as Flak 88s. Because they do have, have that ridiculous amount of armor. Their main gun's not that great, however, but they can withstand quite a bit of punishment and allow a bit more... Freedom of failure, per se. Calliope is also another good option. He has access to Calliope's, which you can get a quite a large number of them, in fact, as well. So I'm not really sure why he did not get it. We do, in fact, have a Kaman Tiger tank out on the field. Two stars of veterancy, 15 armor penetration, 12 armor. Still, we'll have trouble from probably, it will still an action. All they still lose to the uh, Sherman Jumbo in a stand-up fight. So we do got an HS1 129B3, which has 16 arm penetration. That is a lot of arm penetration. Rocket Run does take out one of those bread groups. Uh, Mortar Fire took out the other one. And there goes an M7 Sherman Jumbo, not in a panic state. But it still can get uh, ward away from the rear armor. 
if it gets hit by the rear armor. We'll destroy it from the rear armor. More reinforcing infantry units are coming in. And it looks like the Axis player is just reaching to a much higher mass. There's not a whole lot of indirect fire for the commando player. And we don't see that massive rocket barrage unit, which can really deny an area in general. You see a number of Luftwaffe supporting units. Ground's trying to hit these direct fire pieces. Some more pioneers are being built, or at least has been built. Here we go. I'm really not really sure. Both sides not being too aggressive, but the allies have sustained quite a bit of losses. The allies do in fact have greater income in this point of the game. The, Luf the Luftwaffe has the most income during battle phase uh, B, but then they get their income back to battle phase A amount. So the Luftwaffe player won't be able to deploy as much King Tiger. Looks like he's deploying out a King Tiger, the Panzer or requesting one. Yeah, he he is the one that's Panzer so yeah, I do in fact see a Veteran C2 King Tiger. Got a heavy tank out on the field, and we do in fact have Ronin, the commando player, has in fact surrendered. Now he's being controlled by the AI, and he's just facing now against a critical mass of enemies. He's, he's being double teamed at the moment. The spearhead player in the center really hasn't done up too much to really help fight in the game. From Jumbo, he was dealing with a flak 88 spam with this very wide open area. It can be quite hard to deal with, but he didn't deploy a whole, huge amount of indirect fire to counter them. He didn't build uh, more sure the rest of the Sherman Jumbos available to withstand their fire. Overall, that's pretty much the downhill of the allied players, it looks like. The commando units are being forced to do a massive fallback. It's receiving quite a bit of losses. Two Sherman tanks are now out, but... There is also a flat pack 43. No stars in veterans, but it can still be quite lethal. We got a radio operator to call in naval batteries. This is going to be a massive, some massive barrages. Can easily level this general area. I see three pack, 40, uh, 30, a flak 36 is out in the center of the field. That's a massive amount of AA as well as anti tank capability. The Sherman Jumbo can withstand it all. At least it's frontal armor. We got some bomb runs. Pat's trying to bomb these open run groups that are being controlled by the AI. One did was forced back before dropping off its bombs. The other one will drop its load onto the Bofors, only just spinning it down. We got a time on target, and just in time, we're going to spot it. This is going to bring it down a massive shells to obliterate the general area. There goes the command squad. That was almost. A close miss. I believe it drops eight shells. Fighter rifles are a reasonably tanky squad, so they will be, we'll be trying to perhaps throw some AT grenades, but we'll be forced to pin down briefly there. It may in fact surrender soon. Looks like you know, 
that uh, time and target will roll a lot of misses. I'm not sure how that shot got there when the circle was right around here. Another J JU-88 bomb run. Looks like it forced back a lot of these units. Massive suppression from these rocket runs. Now the King Tiger is now moving forward. There's nothing really the Allies have at the moment in this area to really to engage it. They need to get a, a couple rocket runs onto it, but the Flak 88s will prevent the rocket runs from being very successful. You can even, as main gun, you can even penetrate the frontal armor of the Sherman Jumbo. As such, it just got taken out there. Or the, was that it being dancing around and hit the side armor or rear armor? Nope, it went through this frontal armor. You got another Sherman Jumbo being deployed out, but it's a little bit too late. He needed raising King Tiger when you're by yourself. When you're raising a lot of Flak 88, it's not so good. The Airborne player has been doing a great amount of indirect fire, and it looks like the Spearhead player has in fact surrendered. We're just leaving this airborne player to go ahead and fend for himself. I'm going to just start fast forwarding. This game's ultimately over now. I will won't be able to really secure enough ground versus already a substantial defense by the Axis players. We do in fact have quite a bit of reinforcements coming on in, but they pushed forward and got pushed back. Multiple units has surrendered there. Uh, B3 didn't back. Tracks broke on the Wolverine, destroys a Sherman tank. Here comes the next time on target. He'll claim a half track, but it looks like he's just getting unlucky rolling a bunch of misses from the important units. We'll claim a couple half tracks, however. Yeah, the AI is just sending meats to the grinder. And the airborne player is just way too congested. A uh, radio operator vehicle would have been great in order to displace the airborne forces. Large number of fl uh, flam ponzer is now moving forward. No AT to really speak of. Got a wave of stewards, but that won't really accomplish all too much. Versus units such as the King Tiger and Flak 88. Even against the Puma. Huge wave of stewards. Just one, two, nine, B3 claims more and more kills. Stewart's now rushing in, but they're going to run straight into an AT gun. They will go ahead and start to clean up all these half tracks. Might as well, if you're going to lose a game, might as well go out in style. Tiger Tank was, in fact, smoked off, and that is the end of the replay. This is Ajon saying thank you for watching and signing off.